Well, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, as the case may be. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I thought I'd uh, give you a little tour of our uh, MDF. I talk about it all the time, and uh, I don't know if I've ever, I might have given a small look-see in here before, but I thought I'd give you guys a quick tour of uh, what we actually have down here. Um, we have the doors where you come in, and this very scary sign. So, uh, it might be backwards to you, but it basically says that nickel and cadmium are known to the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. I am so glad I am done reproducing. My wife and I are done. Okay, so now that we know that I may be harmed in here, I'm not going to be harmed. Um, first off, I'm wearing a mask because I'm in the hospital and uh, we're required to wear masks when we're in the hospital. So, uh, trust me, I'm, I'm smiling at each and every one of you. This is me not smiling. This is me smiling. So, uh, you just have to take my word for it. I am smiling at each and every one of you because God loves us all. So I thought I'd start over here. Uh, we have this one rack all by its lonesome. This rack here is our uh, in-house uh, television system. So we get uh, the different channels come in over the air, and then we, re we broadcast them out on different channels here, where all the sound mixing is done for that. Um, we have some amplifiers down here. And then down there we've got a, a little PC that uh, just, it's like our local hospital information channel. They tune to that channel and they get announcements about the hospital. Um, there's our old voice system back there, which we have tons and tons. Probably got like 50 miles of, probably a couple hundred miles of copper uh, wiring in there. Uh, we've got part of our overhead paging system in this rack. We've got engineering storage in these cabinets, a bunch of cables and stuff. Here's um, more overhead paging stuff because it was put in in different, different times at different places. Um, sorry for the whirling and dizziness. This cabinet here is our connection to the county. So all the county switches are in here. We don't manage them. I can't configure them. Just like the ubiquity switch in Manteca, I can't get into it. I can't control it. It's not mine. Um, now, hopefully you guys can hear me over here. I'm going to start trying to talk louder. Uh, this is where AT&T, one of our carriers, comes in. Um, so they come in through this rack here. And it's got a battery backup way down there. Um, I'm going to circle around over here. Here's some more uh, county switches that don't service us. It's just a, a hop-off point. They hop in here to the hospital and they hop right back out and go to the sheriff's office. Um, we have uh, some switches here that service some of the uh, local offices that are here in the basement. Lucky people being in the basement. Over here is our old racks. So all these racks over here that I'm going to show you next basically replaced these two racks here. So we had a switch up in that empty space and a switch over here in this formerly empty space. Um, so a lot of our older fiber plant comes through here and up there. Um, this is our uh, patient monitoring, our vitals network. It's actually, I don't touch that one either. Um, I give them IP addresses, I give them a VLAN that they use to hop across our hospital. But they manage these switches themselves, it's uh, Philips. So EKGs, heart rate, respiration, all that good stuff. That's all managed through here. Uh, we have some older, uh, older. Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Internet service providers up here, down here. We still got them because we still use them for something or other. Uh, I think one's uh, televideo and one is is just one of them just needs to go away. We just haven't gotten around to it yet. Some decommissioned servers down here that we haven't taken out of the rack. UPSs for said servers. 
And below that, more UPSs and more servers. And those aren't ours, so I don't know what those are for. I think Phillips. So you guys don't criticize me for not knowing what anything does around here. Um, okay, then over here, the new racks. This is the newest rack, this is the first rack that was put in. That's all our, our current OM4 fiber that goes throughout the hospital. Um, so all of our hospital closets coming through these patch panels right here. And then they're patched over here into one of two switches. Um, this one down here. So we, these two switches are bonded together. This one and this one. So they are logically one switch, physically two. So the closets will each have a connection going down to this switch and a connection going down to this switch. That's where they all come in. This equipment here, we're looking at the back of it, um, but this basically goes out to, it's a private circuit that goes out to our um, electronic me medical records provider. Um, so that's their equipment. And of course down there, more UPSs down there, more UPSs up there. Um, this is the next rack we install. Uh, it's not as big, and this, we, we didn't order this, it should have been bigger. Um, but it's basically got our VoIP routers in it, and I believe one other Philips server in there somewhere. I believe this one is the Philips uh, Vital server. The rest of it's all VoIP servers and whatnot, routers. So now we get to the newest rack. And this is where our fabric comes in. This is where uh, I tell you we're going to have two cores up in the data center. We're going to have two cores here. And those four cores are going to be the heart of our fabric deployment. So uh, what we got here is two 8400s. That's the, the second and third core switch. All the fibers that are currently plugged into these two switches. There we are. These two switches. They're going to be repatched across the top of the rack. We're going to put in a, uh, a raceway. And they're going to be repatched over to one or the other of these two switches. Um, so one, one connection on each switch. So hopefully, what we're going to have the ability to do is uh, any one, either of these two switches could go down, or both could go down, and we would still be able to access our uh, closets up on the floors upstairs in the hospital. Um, we don't expect them both to go down at once, but you never know. Um, but what I am looking forward to is being able to update firmware. So I can update firmware on this guy and reboot it. When it comes back up, I can update firmware on that guy and reboot it. And we won't lose connectivity to the hospital at all. Uh, this next set of equipment is, again, our electronic medical records provider. It's the same batch of equipment I was showing you over there, um, except this is going to work with the, the new system we're putting in here. So we're going to patch this all in, get it all set up and working, then we will deinstall those over there. And so these correspond to a, a duplicate set of equipment up there in the data center across the campus. Um, so yeah, I was going to just show you this. This is before we re-rack and, and repatch everything. Um, so this rack will look different. We haven't uh, attacked it yet. Um, my next video, I'll show you what, what my boss and I did up in the data center. Mostly her. She was cracking the whip. So, uh, but while I'm at it, I thought it'd be kind of, you guys might be interested in uh, different ways we rack the switches. I mean, how are they mounted? So, and, and actually one of the one that I prefer is uh, this type where you have mounting ears and you just screw it straight into the rack. There's nothing in the back to support it except the front mounting ears. Um, for this particular type of rack, we have to put in these um, special clips that have uh, threaded fasteners in them, basically nuts, they're captive nuts. They clip into these square holes here and then we just screw something from the front into that and it's in there. So that's the way these four devices here are held in. Um, and like I said, you just screw it from the front and it's in. It's not going anywhere. My arm's getting tired. So the other way is to uh, use slides. 
So our newer switches here, they're all mounted with slides, and which is kind of a good thing because you know if we ever needed to, you you can pop the tops off of these by you know popping these things open, and uh, you can get at the insides, or more more than likely the service engineer can get at the insides. But uh, yeah, they're real nice. They slide out, they lock in place, so they don't go anywhere. You can't push it back in. You can't pull it out. If you wanted to pull it out, you would pull forward on this little white catch right here, and then it'll come out. Now, since I only have one hand, I'm not going to do the other side. But if I thumb this, this slide forward on this side and on the other side, then this will slide out, and I can take it out and move the rails around. Uh, same thing, you put it back in, it locks, you can't push it in. So when you're ready to push it in, you push these blue tabs here. Push them in the direction of pushing the switch in. I'm going to see if I can do this one-handed. If not, I'll have to put the phone down. All right, hang on. I think I can do this. I think I can. I think I can. I did. All right. I'm push that back in. And then to uh, keep it in there, I'll see if I can show this. You'll see right in here, inside the mounting rail, there's a threaded, like a nut, that's built into the rail that this, this will screw into. So once you push it in, you just turn this thumb screw, and that holds it in so it won't come out. So this switch is actually going to have to move. I'm not going to move it right now. Um, because, again, I only have one hand. So what I will do is show you how the actual rails are mounted. So they have these pins that come through the, these, and they have different ones for if you have round holes or threaded holes, um, you put in different pins here in the front. But you basically, you want to put it in, you just line it up where you want it, push it forward, and it clips in. This little click here holds it. You can take it out, push that to the side, push it out. I'm actually going to take these out because I just deinstalled those two switches right there. I'm going to take these rails out. Put it in the front here. Again, only one, only one hand. And I'm going to go into the back here. Pull this out with one hand. Set it over here. And so same thing in the back. I should have showed you on that side. Um, too dark in here. Where am I looking? Yeah, right here. The same thing is on the front, only the clip is a little bit bigger. You got this kind of a big blue clip pull it and then the whole thing just comes right out. I'll show you on a rail that's already out. So, right here. These are the ones that go in the back. So you just push them into the square holes, push it backwards, and then this locks around the, the uh, side of the railing there. So you want to take it out, push that forward, and pull it out. So that's how the uh, slides mount to the cabinet. And I took this slide off of the switch so you can see how they actually mount to the side of the switch. Uh, let's see if I can do this. All right, so there you see the switch. Let me hold it up first. You see there's these holes in the side and they correspond to these, um, these little pins on the switch sides. So all you have to do is line those holes up. There's three of them. There's one, two, and three. Three, three. You can't see that one because it's under this, there's a, a clip right on top. And that clip is what holds it in. So you line it, you push that down so that it's pushing the, this clip up, and you just pull it to the back. And then now you see, do you see? You see that little pin has popped out, and this little clip right here is what keeps the uh, slide from coming off. And, uh, pardon my hand, what's nice about that is 
there's no left or right. They'll just work on either side. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, these these two switches are going to go down to the county, and that's what's going to connect us back to uh, back to our county, our overlords, our owners. Um, they're going to come get those, install those downtown. They're going to connect into this. And this will connect into this. And this is all I'll have to configure, these four. This, this guy won't be mine to configure. That'll be the county. So you can kind of think of it like a DMARC. Kind of like this. So we have our AT&T rack. We've got a Sienna router. I don't configure that. They just give me a handoff. I plug into it. Just think of this as like a Sienna router. So I don't configure it. He's just going to give me a handoff and I'm going to plug into it. It's going to go into this guy here, our WAN switch. So that'll be mine to configure. That'll be my, my edge to the county and his edge to me. So, all right. I think that's about all I got for today. I'm trying to keep these videos a little bit shorter so they don't get boring and you don't click off and say, ah, oh, this guy's just rambling on again. So, Anyway, I, um, I really appreciate all the comments. Uh, you guys are pretty good. Uh, I got, a, I got uh, another video I'm thinking of doing, which is uh, some of the uh, job offers I've been getting. So I thought maybe for you guys that have not really worked as network admins, I might go through the job offer. It'll tell you, like... Uh, you know what they what the qualifications are they're looking for and what what kind of uh, abilities they say you have to have and uh, I was thinking I'll go through and translate that or what that really means so uh, I have one in my inbox right now that I'm holding on to it's just an email that they sent me because I found my LinkedIn profile and they're searching on keywords it's it's not really suited to me but it could be suited for one of you guys so I'll uh, probably I'll make it yeah I'll try to make that one pretty soon a, uh, a video with uh, what those job offers look like and what they're asking for and what they really mean. So look for that one coming up. Um, that's it for today. So everybody, thanks for joining in. Um, hope you've had a, a restful weekend. I usually post these on Sunday morning. Um, so if it is Sunday morning there, I hope you find time to rest. I hope you find time to, to praise and worship God and enjoy Him. Because uh, just remember, that's that's... In my belief system, that's the chief end of man, is to glorify God and to worship Him forever uh, and enjoy Him forever. So that's what we're looking forward to. And all right, with that, I will wind it up and quit yammering on. So God bless everyone. We'll catch you next time.